Today we will build the LoRa based mailbox notifier shown in video number 493 from ground up, including a gateway. The process will take us through designing a custom PCB, hardware assembly, functional testing, 3D printing enclosures and configuring automatic discovery within Home Assistant. Throughout the project, I'll share insights and tips from an engineer's perspective, covering techniques that can be easily adapted for a range of other IoT projects. We'll work with a modern AT Tiny, an ESP32, and LoRa modules. Stick around until the end, and you will know why I'm sticking with non rechargeable batteries for this project. Trust me, there is a good reason for that and you will see the newest addition to my lab. Exciting times. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent bringing you a new episode with fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you'll always sit in the front row. In the last video, we evaluated the proper LoRa modules as well as the MCUs for both devices. I strongly recommend watching this video if you are interested in how the system works. This is the system overview. The mailbox notifier is battery powered and therefore uses an AT Tiny 1614 and an E32 LoRa module. The gateway uses the same LoRa module and because it has to connect to the internet uses an ESP32 and is powered by USB. Communication between the devices is handled with LoRa modulation and an automatic repeat request system to ensure reliable transmission even with potential interferences. The Home Assistant integration is based on MQTT and will include auto discovery. Both devices will have proper housing. To save a lot of time, I will print them based on my universal box design. Let's start with the notifier. As the former video showed, I built a prototype on breadboards. Because the AT Tiny comes in an SMD case, I soldered it on such a small PCB. These PCBs are available for many standard chip sizes. A first tip. Instead of standard breadboard wires, I use silicon wires. They are more expensive, but are very flexible, pleasant to touch, and have thicker in the wires. A perfect Christmas gift for you if your wife asks. To make the design more reliable and compact, I want to use a custom PCB. No, this isn't a sponsored video. I paid for the PCBs because it's absolutely worth the cost. For small projects like this one, I use EasyEDA for its simplicity and quick ordering process. For more complex designs, I typically use KiCad. There are a few key things about this process. I use 1206 SMD parts because they are easy to handle also for an old guy like me. And usually there is enough space on such simple PCBs. These resistor and capacitor assortments are very handy for such projects. I designed the PCB with a ground plane on one side and a VCC plane on the other. Connecting relevant pins through vias to these planes reduces potential interferences and results in a cleaner layout. If RF signals were involved, I would have opted for a four-layer PCB. While designing, I typically reassign certain GPIO pins for better layout. For example, I moved the open switch from pin 3 on the prototype to pin 13 because it is on the other side of the IC. This gave a cleaner routing on the board. The newer AT Tiny chips can be programmed via UPDI using just one pin. I included a programming header with ground VCC and a UPDI pin, allowing in circuit programming after the chip is soldered. For power management, I decided against including voltage regulators or battery charging circuitry. Instead, I'm powering the notifier with two AA batteries. Why? In the last video, we saw that the notifier has a very low power draw, allowing it to run for extended periods 
on a single set of AA batteries. The notifier will be mounted inside the mailbox away from my house. I didn't want to deal with bringing it indoors for charging. Replacing the batteries is a simpler solution. This reduces the number of parts and the complexity of the PCB. Without a voltage regulator, there is no power loss, so the battery lasts even longer. This setup works because the ATtiny 1614 is rated down to 1.8 volts and the E32 down to 2.3 volts. Two standard AA batteries discharge most of their energy above 2.3 volts, making this a reliable and efficient choice. With the help of Autoroot, I can quickly find a convenient placement of the parts and ready is the PCB. A little trick, I order PCBs in different colors for each version of the same PCB and note the version somewhere on the silk layer. If there are only small changes between versions, it is easy to mix them. This time my first version is yellow. A few weeks later the PCBs arrived. As mentioned, 1206 SMD parts are large and easy to solder, much easier than through-hole components. I find that using a binocular magnifier helps with precision, but if your eyesight is good, you won't need one. Electronic microscopes don't work well for this kind of soldering. Watch video number 70 for more details. After just a few minutes of soldering, the PCB was complete. One note about the connectors for the switches. I use a magnetic switch for both the mailbox door and the opening. To avoid misconnection during testing or future battery changes, I assign a male connector to one and a female connector to the other. Like that, they cannot be mixed. Another trick. I initially use a connector for the E32 module to allow flexibility during debugging. After final testing, I directly solder the E32 to the PCB to save space and improve reliability. A small 3D printed part between the two components ensures everything stays secure and avoids shorts. With the notifier finished, I could go on with building the final gateway. However, as an engineer, I prefer to modify only one component at a time, to simplify troubleshooting. Therefore, I kept the prototype gateway intact and luckily the finished notifier worked perfectly with it. For the gateway, I replaced the development board with this compact ESP32 mini board, adding a tantalum capacitor between 3.3 volts and ground to handle power consumption peaks. While this might be overkill, it gives me peace of mind. Here too, I used 30 AWG silicon wires for their flexibility and heat resistance during soldering. I always color code wires, black for ground, red for VCC and orange for the clock signal and not to the film A Clockwork Orange. The rest is randomly assigned. The two boards are mounted back to back using double-sided tape, which I frequently use in my projects. The next step is to test the system before printing the enclosures. One step after the other reduces the complexity. Before taking the notifier to the mailbox, I connect the gateway to Home Assistant. Why? Because for testing I want to see the results on my smartphone at the mailbox and later on the tablet in our kitchen. There are two ways to integrate with Home Assistant. Auto Discovery. The easiest method for users, though it's more work for the developer. As soon as your gateway connects to the home network, Home Assistant discovers it as an MQTT device and you can use it. The user has to write YAML code to define the device. Since I've done the groundwork, you easily can use Auto Discovery. The device must expose two MQTT topics and in the setup function a message is sent to the discovery topic. 
This message in JSON format includes the sensor's name, type and an MQTT topic to transfer the state. The Arduino JSON library handles this nicely. The message must also include a unique ID for which I use the last four digits of the board's MAC address. As we see in MQTT Explorer, it creates a nested JSON with the relevant data. The device part is not mandatory, but looks nice in Home Assistant. You are good to go if you include this function in your sketch and adapt it to your data. The notifiers message like full or empty are published to the state topic. Once configured, the device appears in Home Assistant's MQTT integration, ready for automation. Personally, I stick to Node-RED for more complex tasks and use Home Assistant automation for simpler ones. The integration of Home Assistant and Node-RED is excellent, by the way. In this case, I've set up this little icon on the dashboard in our kitchen and a telegram notification for mail arrivals. That's exactly what I was aiming for. With everything working, I proceed with 3D printing the enclosures. Both are based on my parametric box from video number 258. Because the existing setup has a similar size, I can reuse the notifier box. For the gateway, I designed this box with a platform to stabilize the ESP32. And now comes my new arrival. Finally, I replaced my trusty Prusa with a Bamboo Lab P1S with AMS. I should have done it much earlier because the difference is way bigger than anticipated. Its automation eases my printing. Its mind-boggling speed with perfect results is a joy to watch and its integration into Home Assistant makes automation much easier. You see, the 3D printer is a tool not a hobby for me. During the assembly of the gateway, I used the antenna to secure the E32 module in place. A comment about printing holes. I often print holes slightly undersized and then use a reamer to achieve a precise fit. Like that, they are perfectly round, also on a vertically printed wall. The box snaps together and can easily be opened with a pry tool if needed. The notifier is mounted in the mailbox and the gateway is installed in a corner of our home. Now I have to order some stuff to test my setup. A good excuse for my wife. That was all for today. As always you find all the relevant links in the description. If you found this video useful or interesting, please support the channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.